No Man's Sky is a space survival game where you explore the vast expanse of space and discover entirely new planets. With such a game model, you'd have expected it to be one of the most successful games of the 8th console generation. However, this was not the case, at least at launch. Sit back and enjoy while I take you on a journey through the history of No Man's Sky and also give my thoughts on the game as a whole. No Man's Sky launched in August 2016 for PS4 and PC. The hype for the game had been high since the game's announcement back in December of 2013. The launch was initially scheduled for June of 2016, but was delayed because some key moments needed extra polish to bring them up to our standards, according to lead director Sean Murray. Upon release, the game was critically panned for many reasons, such as being an overall lacklustre game, a lot of space, not much to do, boring planets, and most importantly, no online support. This in turn led to the game getting mixed or average reviews according to Metacritic, a far cry from the expected outcome of the game. Even IGN only gave it a 6, which should tell you all you need to know about the launch. Memes popped up across the internet involving Sean Murray, as many fans suggested he blatantly lied about the game's contents to get people to buy it. At first, this seemed to be true, but then. After the initial negative press, developers Hello Games decided to work on updating the game to give the fans the experience they were promised in the pre-release days. The foundation update was the first to arrive. This came four months after release and added features such as base building, and with it the possibility of farming. Along with this, the update introduced the buying and selling of freighters, where you could store items. This update also added two new game modes, survival and creative. Survival was for those who wanted a tougher gameplay experience, whereas creative was for those who just wanted to build. This update was a big step in the right direction, but the game still had a long way to go before it reached the hype of the pre-release trailers. Four months after the Foundation update, the Pathfinder update became the second major update to the game. This update added planetary vehicles known as Exocraft. Online base sharing was also added so you could share your creations with your friends, along with the expansion of base building itself. Another new mode was added with the Permadeath mode, as the name suggests, once you die it is permanent, which adds an extra level of difficulty. The Atlas Rises update arrived a year after the game's initial release. This update brought an improved storyline as well as adding a reported 30 hours of story content. A big addition in this update was the crashed freighter ships, which was shown in the initial pre-release trailers. Portals were also activated in this update, along with teleportation being added. The biggest addition in this update was the joint exploration mode, where you could interact with other players who were represented by floating white orbs in-game. This was the closest to multiplayer the game had seen at this point, so fans were happy to see this added. The game was finally starting to deliver on promises that were made before the game's release. In July of 2018, the No Man's Sky Next update was released. While this update didn't have as many new features as other updates, this had the thing that people had all been waiting for. Multiplayer. This introduced the ability to play with friends, or join new people you find on your journey. The major additions in this update led to various review sites increasing their score of No Man's Sky, with IGN increasing its review score up to 7 in 2018. The Abyss update was the next to arrive. This brought with it many changes to the underwater exploration and gameplay. Sunken wrecks were added, which contained valuable alien treasure to loot. Along with this, more creatures were added, some of which are guarding the sunken wrecks. 
The biggest of the additions were the submarines, which make ocean exploration much faster, easier, and more enjoyable for the player. The Visions update followed soon after. This update introduced rare artifacts known as trophies from alien worlds. Archaeology was also added to the game, as burial sites will give you rare skeleton fragments worth a lot of money. In August of 2019, No Man's Sky Beyond was released to the public. This new large update was instrumental in the game's eventual success. This update made the multiplayer far more immersive, as well as adding VR compatibility for PC and PS4. Along with this, the update transformed the anomaly into a social hub, where up to 16 players could all meet and join each other's adventures. This paved the way for No Man's Sky to become a cult icon in the modern gaming world, and showed that redemption is possible, even with all the mistakes in the process. No Man's Sky is one of my favourite games of the 8th console generation. In fact, it's one of my favourite games of all time. Now this might seem quite extreme, but let me explain. I have always had a soft spot for No Man's Sky. From when I first played it, there was just something about the game that drew me to it, and now I'm very happy that happened. The calming nature of going around space discovering entirely new planets can be such a rewarding experience. While it might feel like the game is empty, it actually works to make every experience feel rewarding in its own right. Even just finding a new planet can feel like such a large achievement. The gameplay itself isn't bad either with the ship controls feeling responsive enough for a large space going vessel, and the pulse speed making travel much more bearable than regular speed. When on a planet, the mining of resources is fun to a point, but can get a little monotonous at times. The planet you get is entirely luck based, with more than 18 quintillion procedurally generated planets, or this number to be exact. Some slightly lacklustre planets are to be expected. Ship combat is possibly one of the most interesting aspects of the game in terms of gameplay, as you can come across pirates that could hold you for ransom or attack, and also freighter convoys may attack if provoked. These encounters can be fun, but can also become very frustrating when they can seem never-ending when the crime rate of these pirates goes up and up. I had been playing the game on a base model PS4, and in all honesty it is now starting to struggle. When entering the anomaly for example, the frame rate dips down very low, to the point where it looks like a slideshow. However, while producing this video, I was lucky enough to get a PS5 and in turn a free upgrade to the PS5 edition of the game. While playing this edition, I made sure to check the anomaly as I did before. While the frame rate was far more stable, it still dipped in places, which leads me to believe that there could be slightly poor optimization on their part, but nothing that affects general gameplay, especially on higher spec hardware. The game isn't without its glitches and bugs, but none of them I experienced were game breaking. Buildings sometimes take a while to load in on planets, and this caused a slight issue once or twice, when I landed somewhat inside the building. Another glitch I encountered was a sound issue on the anomaly, where sound was cutting out intermittently.
Additionally, while exploring a crashed freighter ship, I discovered that I could walk up near vertical walls, which should have been impossible. None of these glitches affected anything though, as they were more funny than annoying. While I have put quite a few hours into the game, there is so much more to explore and find out. This game is vast, so if you're looking for a game to play continuously and grind, then this is definitely a title for you. To me, this game walks the line of casual chilled gaming and grinding rather well, as it can be very pleasant for both playstyles. Another thing to take into consideration is how small the studio is that made the game. We are all here comparing it to AAA games, while Hello Games is a little studio in Guildford with 26 developers. It is truly wondrous that they pulled off such a vast and spectacular game. I first started No Man's Sky in 2016, when I bought my copy less than two months after release for £18. And to this day, that might be one of the best bargains I have ever got. As I said before, I have always liked the game, but as a result of the amazing work put in by Hello Games, it has gone from a guilty pleasure to genuinely being one of the best games I own. I am very glad I bought this game, and if you haven't already, I would have to recommend this game to those of you who are thinking of buying it. It is a truly amazing experience.